This is a sector that is in an acute crisis and it is absolutely time to get the defibrillators out. Every single artist that you've ever loved has started out in a small grassroots music venue without doubt. If we lose these places, then we will inevitably lose all of the bands and artists that we are yet to fall in love with. The situation at the moment is very, very serious. Um, we obviously had a difficult pandemic, um, but um, interestingly, most of the venues survived. Coming out the back of that COVID crisis, unfortunately, we've had two very, very hard years. It's just the spiral of costs going upwards all the time without an increase in income. But there are other issues, noise complaints, developers coming in, all these things add up and it just means that it's incredibly stressful and very, very challenging to try and keep one of these venues open. So here we are in South London. Uh, we're visiting a venue called Eclectic and this is the latest venue that's going to be closed in London. This one is closing down because of planning and development. The whole of this area you can see, all this garden is part of a massive new development. This is a depressing sight, isn't it? This is was a vibrant hub, celebratory place for the local community, live music, electronic music, a real feeling of a community coming together. And now just look, just an empty space. You have to ask, whose city is this? Because it doesn't belong to this community, it belongs to developers and planners who don't seem to care about our spaces where we share these experiences. We are getting evicted after a, month, a year of fighting against um, the developers and the decision from the Lambeth Council. Over 10 years, we hosted events uh, and supported a lot of artists um, that's trying to push the boundaries of sound. This just feels like really, really painful um, for, for all of us. This is basically the last day here at uh, all paralyzed yards at, uh, and uh, we have just a few things to, to pack up and bring into the storage and just basically give the key back and close the chapter. Grassroots music venues are important for a whole range of reasons. They're really critical for local communities. They're places where we go out and we socialise, we dance, we have fun, we fall in love. It's also important for art and culture. You know, music's one of our biggest cultural exports. One in every seven albums bought in the world is a, is a UK music artist. That's a really important thing for the UK as a country. The beautiful thing about this grassroots venue and so many others around the country starts outside the door. There's a big queue here that goes down the street. There's a great sense of excitement. Here we're coming for a big night out to see our current favourite artists. You'll come through here and to this great big huge room. This will be completely packed full of people. It's going to be hot, it's going to be loud. There's all the lights going. There's a great atmosphere in here. It's full of vibes. There's a load of people with their hands in the air watching their favourite artists. I like to stand here. I like to stand at the back of the room and I like to look out over that sea of people having a fantastic time and watch how the crowd and the artists interact and how the show develops and how the energy bounces around the room and exchanges between the artist on stage and the audience so that you get the best possible um, evening of, of art and music. This is where Village Underground started actually. We are uh, on the roof of the music venue. Um, these are old London Underground tube train carriages as you can see, recycled shipping containers which we've converted into not-for-profit studio spaces and I think it's typical of what a lot of grassroots venues do because yes they're venues but they often do so much more for their communities. We're finding it a huge challenge as much as all of the venues are. I think about 25% of London's grassroots music venues have volunteered themselves to go onto the critical list. We are similarly finding it incredibly difficult. We run corporate events in here and private hires to carry on trying to earn additional money to further subsidise live music. But ultimately, it is a sector that's going to need some intervention. 
This whole conversation needs to be juxtapositioned against another fact. And the fact is that 2023 was the best year ever for live music in the UK. More money has been raised from more big concerts than has ever been raised ever before. And there should be a certain amount of shame to that. A contribution of one pound per ticket on arena and stadium events would raise enough money to keep spaces like this going all across the country. Arena and stadium prices have, have absolutely exploded. Lots of tickets are more than £100 now. Would it really change the costings if £1 out of that was going into spaces like this to support the next generation of artists that will be headlining those same areas and stadiums in 10, 15 years time? The important thing is, number one, turn this video off, go online to your local venue and book yourself a gig ticket. This is a use it or lose it type of a situation. If you don't go to these venues, they will be gone, just like your local bookstore and your local record store. And number two, write to your local MP. Tell them about the music venue in their constituency. Tell them what it means to you. Tell them why it's important. Because currently, right now, all the work that's being done to create political action within government is starting to bear fruit. And collectively, we need to keep that pressure up because I do believe that the government is close to action. I do believe that the industry itself is close to action. And when those two things come together, there will be the solution to save all of these venues. We do have the means. We just need to create the will.